Here at the Master Nodes, we are not making any claims as to income you may earn. Before entering any agreement, please use caution and seek the advice of a professional advisor, such as attorney or financial advisor. Please ensure your own research is done before investing any money into the market. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Ryan Prendez. This is my business partner, Nestor Sanchez. Hey, what's up, guys? And we are the Master Nodes. First and foremost, want to go ahead and thank you guys all for tapping in today. We really appreciate the time that you guys have taken out of your day to come in, check out these videos and, you know, leave a comment and like, hopefully, and uh, do a little subscribe. So thank you guys. Uh, We want to remind you guys that we're on all social media accounts and to join our email list. We're on IG, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. We have uh, LinkedIn. We have TikTok. If you guys have any questions, and you guys want to reach out to us, we understand a lot of people are on Instagram. We're on Instagram and all of our socials are at the master nodes. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and reach out to us. You could also reach out to us uh, through our website. We have our email on there. So shoot us a quick email. Our website is www.themasternodes.com. If you guys have any questions, like I said, go ahead and reach out to us, please. We are here and willing to help you anytime. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, to get down to it, today's news of the week. Uh, Today's news is the crypto platform Poly Network has actually been hit with a $600 million heist. And in a bizarre twist, the hacker has actually now returned most of the stolen money, but is withholding more than $200 million worth of the funds until everyone is ready. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, but Poly Network actually promised the hacker a $500,000 bounty for the restoration of the user's funds, and even invited them to become the chief security advisor. So I think that's pretty crazy how they did, why they did that. Um, You know, they just got that money stolen. And they're, I guess, saying, okay, since you returned the funds, um, obviously, you're a bit um, better than um, just for stealing it. So he exposed um, a certain security breach that they kind of had. And he's now returning the funds. So they're like, hey, maybe he's going to help us out with security. Maybe he can help us with that. And these bug bounty programs, I know that um, more cryptocurrency platforms are actually utilizing them to better their security. You know, um, We're going to go on to some um, price points that ETH has been hitting. Um, it's right now around 3300 So that's pretty cool. It's been a nice little green week, a uh, green few weeks, actually. Um, <laughs> Seeing a nice little pump, 3,300. Right now, Bitcoin is at 45,000. And that's kind of going to wrap up the news of the week. And we're going to be diving into the, today's topic, which is Ethereum. So first and foremost, we're going to go over what is Ethereum. Ethereum is a software platform created to make it easy and convenient to run decentralized apps on. Ether is the coin that is used to run these apps through fees called gas fees. Anyone can create a dApp to run on Ethereum's platform that could have their own token. So a lot of people actually get kind of confused with dApps. What are dApps? Dapp is simply short for decentralized application, and they work on smart contracts that allow users to create their own applications on top of Ethereum's platform. Without Ethereum, in order for someone to make a decentralized currency, They would need to know code. They would need to know all about cryptocurrency and how it works. They would also need a ton of money, a ton of resources, and a ton of power. And on top of all that, they would need to know how to use a network. So, you know, it just, it's convenient. The creator, when he came out with these, or with Ethereum, he came out with with that in mind. Like, you know, a lot of people don't really want to venture into the crypto space because they have to worry about all these things. So for easy, convenient use, created Ethereum for simplicity, to allow anyone to come to its platform, to go ahead and create their own token, and to go ahead and get started in the crypto space. The more people that use these apps, the more resources are distributed to them. People have called Ethereum a decentralized internet. And Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap. And is most likely due to its many different use cases and adaptability. A lot of people ask me though, how does it work? Yeah, how does Ethereum work? That's a good question that you should always be asking, making sure that you understand the background behind anything that you invest into. You know, whether it's gold, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, you need to know how it works, why it works, and why does it go up in value? 
So kind of to preface this, um, proof of stake protocol is what it's ran on. And I'm going to go over like what it is. The proof of stake protocol states that a person can validate block transactions if they lock up or stake their Ethereum. Um, they are chosen based on an algorithm and based on how many coins are, hold, are held. And uh, members are rewarded for holding their coins and validating successful transactions. And they're actually penalized. They're taken. They take a piece of that stake, that they, the money that they've put up, and they actually take it. If they fail to validate the network or they try to attack the network, or even if they just go offline because their job is to validate transactions. And if they're not doing that, then they're gonna be penalized. So it rewards you for doing good, penalizes you for doing bad. Um, developers, in order to um, put a platform or an application on Ethereum, all they need to know is Ethereum's coding language, which is Solidity, in order to write the self-executing smart contracts that run that decentralized application. So in order for an application to run, it needs to know its own rules. It has to be strict and they have to be if and then statements. So for example, if there is enough funds in my wallet and I send money to someone, then the transaction will be valid and go through. Um, this allows users to create decentralized applications easily without the mess of having to learn and create a new baseline of coding. And like how Ryan was saying, they would have to have all these upfront investment, all these upfront resources in order to try and make a decentralized app. And, um, you know, uh, Vitalik actually wanted something that was public, that was a general blockchain that anyone can kind of code and serve as their own purpose. So that's pretty cool. Who is Vitalik Buterin? This Good is question. definitely one of the biggest questions I get today. And he honestly, he slips in and out of the shadows. Like I, I you, mm. you hear about him for a little bit and then it's like, he goes away <laughs> like and then I he don't gets know. The, like shiba inu right he's the very, yeah he's <laughs> the he's the most social anti-social person ever i i really <laughs> believe he's a part of the anti-social social club you know like, <laughs> like yeah. i think he's a founding member i'm not gonna <laughs> lie you know uh so who is vitalik buter he is the creator of ethereum it was proposed in 2013 and launched in 2015 he is a current russian canadian programmer that fell in love with the concept of cryptocurrency, he decided to create his own blockchain and name it Ethereum. Vitalik noticed the lack of diversity amongst crypto at the time. He wanted to create a platform in which others like himself can easily create their own coins and programs. Vitalik built Ethereum as a blockchain platform that other applications could be built on top of. Ethereum was founded on five core principles, simplicity, universality, modularity, agility, and non-discrimination. As we know, as we all know, cryptocurrency's biggest emphasis is non-discriminatory. So, you know, for him to create this and keep that car, that core principle in mind and then keep the simplicity concept in mind, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> That's the only word I could really use to describe least. it because this you know this guy started when he was 17 years old 17 he created this platform that we now know today that has i don't even know what its market cap is you know for him to be so such a young age to create this essentially a uh, crypto conglomerate you know mm -hmm. it's 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 astonishing it's it's really um inspiring as well you know there's also a lot of things that can be done on Ethereum's network that we're going to have Nestor dive into and go ahead and explain to you guys. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, when they think cryptocurrency, they just think of exchanging value. Like they probably think of Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, its sole purpose is to exchange Bitcoin from one person to another. And cryptocurrency is a huge umbrella term that can be used in tons of different ways. So I'm kind of going to go over some of the different um, cryptocurrencies that are actually on Ethereum's network, um, kind of what they do, how they run. And it's going to show you the very versatile ways that cryptocurrency can be used. Um, I'm going to dive into something called basic attention token, which is short, um, which is also known as BAT token. And this platform is a token on Ethereum's blockchain that makes it easier to compensate publishers. So bat holders can use the platform to buy a variety of advertising services. And um, even the users, they use 
something called the Brave browser, which is just like a browser, just like Google, just like Yahoo, you search in something and you get an answer, right? And the bat holders or the users use Brave browser and that Brave browser actually blocks advertisements and rewards advertisers um, with bat token when you choose to view them organically. So I could say, hey, I don't like it when people um, track my track my data. I don't like it when I get annoying ads, annoying pop-ups. So what Brave Browser does is, hey, you don't like it? Sure, I'm going to take off all the ads. But if you want to view ads organically, you actually get compensated for your basic attention. So that's why it's called basic attention token. And um, it also, it's basically rewarding both sides, the users for viewing and the advertisers for getting their ads watched. So that's one different way that cryptocurrency can be used. Another way is through um, MakerDAO. That's one platform or one network that's actually being used on Ethereum. It's a financial service with no central authority, which can be used to lend or borrow money. It has two tokens. One is MKR or Maker, and the other one is DAI. MKR is actually a governance token that is actually used to pay interest on any loans you receive. So basically, if I have MKR, I also have a vote. But um, because I borrowed something from the platform and I had to pay it back with interest, I'm going to pay that interest with that MKR. And um, I'm also able to vote, like I said. So I'm able to use that MKR to voice my opinion on that platform. Maybe they want to add certain, um, certain coins or certain protocols, certain rules, and you get to vote on that because you are a user. So why wouldn't you be able to? Um, it's also backed by crypto assets um, such as Ethereum and is over collateralized if you use um, that to borrow money. So you have to put in a little bit more Ethereum or a cryptocurrency and borrow that um, money. I think it's 1.5. So you have to put 1.5 times the Ethereum that you'd um, want to borrow against. And it uses smart contracts to remain decentralized. Another one is Augur. Augur is a platform which allows anyone to create their own prediction markets. So one example I'd like to bring up is when I saw Augur, it was um, during the election. So they had, who's going to win? We have Donald Trump or Moneybags Joe, right? So you have these two different sides and they get to choose. If I chose um, uh, Joe Biden to win, then I would have gotten some Augur because I predicted correctly. Um, users will bet either yes or no on various events. So it could go from elections to um, basketball to whether Steph Curry is going to beat his record today. You know, there's tons of different things that you can um, bet on, use these various events and bet on the outcomes. It's kind of used for like gambling and forecasting, basically cuts out the middleman in order to have all the all the money that you've earned go directly to you rather than going to, you know, DraftKings or other sporting platforms. They take huge fees to just move your money, right? So it kind of moves, um, moves out that middleman in order to give everybody a better opportunity to make money. And, you know, it's just really cool to see how um, Ethereum is growing and just evolving over time. You know, they're adding tons of different coins, tons of different applications, tons of different utilizations. So it's cool to see like that, that growth. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, when it comes to the growth and the evolution of Ethereum, you know, one question I do seem to come across is what is Ethereum evolving into? Like, where is it going? What is next for Ethereum? And some of the things that are next for Ethereum is ETH2. Uh, ETH2 is the moving away from proof of work to proof of stake, making it more efficient and cheaper. In order for Ethereum to improve its scalability, they use something called sharding as well. This is the technique that is used to spread out the storage and computing power between participating nodes. It is decentralized and secure, making it more efficient, efficient and faster. There's a lot more to talk about with sharding and Ethereum. If you guys have any questions or about any of the protocols or any dApps ran on Ethereum, just let us know and we'll go ahead and send you guys a message back explaining further about these subjects. Mm -hmm. When it comes to our social medias, we are, like we said before, or like I had said at the beginning, we are on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, we have a LinkedIn as well. If you guys want to go ahead and view out our visual 
podcast. We're on YouTube and we have our audio podcasts on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and all your other favorite podcast sources. Yeah, guys. So uh, thanks for listening. Please leave a review and obviously subscribe to the podcast. We would love to hear any comments, questions down below. Um, this week's featured testimonial is actually going to be from my boy, Gabriel. Uh, he's my homie. Cre crypto is a valuable asset to learn about, especially in the upcoming years as it begins to be adopted into our everyday lives. Uh, Nestor and Ryan are well informed and can get you started with creating the foundation to your investment in cryptocurrency. So thanks for that, Gabe. Um, we look forward to meeting more and talking more about it. Um, and we'd love to hear you guys' testimonials as well. So if you guys have any, you can DM us, like how you were saying, or even through our email list. And uh, next week, join us for what is DeFi? You know, what is it? How does it work? And the different components of DeFi, you know, we're talking about smart contracts, staking, and um, all these different things that we actually do. Thank you guys for joining. Much appreciated as always and bless up. Yeah, guys, have a great day. Try your best to choose kindness and try to make someone's day.